Welcome. If you're watching this video, you either know you've got dyslexia, maybe you were diagnosed when you were young, um, or as a later adult, we're finding a lot of people getting diagnosed at 30, 40, 50, um, and trying to hunt for some answers and solutions that are going to help them in life. Maybe you think you're dyslexic. Maybe you've got an idea of it, but you haven't paid to go and get fully diagnosed. And what we find is majority of the people who think they're dyslexic turn out to be dyslexic, as you've probably already decided yourself. So let's dive into this. I know I want to keep your attention focused on what we're going to talk about today. So let's start off. So everyone is born a right brain thinker. When you're a little kid or a little baby, you don't know your mum by her name, mum. You know her by how she looks, how she feels, how she smells. So everyone, when they're really young, starts off favoring the right side of their brain. Now, what happens at a certain age is a percentage of us go off and go down a right brain track and another percentage go the other way and are much more symbolic. They find reading easier, assimilating information. It's the way the brain is structured. Um, about where it's dominated that really makes someone dyslexic or not. Yale came out and said 20% of the world, they believe, has some form of dyslexia. So let's give you a bit of an idea. It's one in five, which is quite huge. And it'll be interesting to see if that number increases as they do more and more research. The next thing we I'd really like before we jump into the traits to realize is that we are all a cocktail of different things. No one is 100% right-brained. We have some left brain traits, but it's really on a spectrum. Some people find dyslexia much more challenging than others, um, and some just find it a little advantage. So it's very different. And a lot of things that will have affected you in your life will turn you into the person you are today. The other thing to note is that dyslexia usually comes around with things like dyspraxia, dyscalculia, a terrible word to say, uh, ADHD and similar things like that. So it, it is around with a lot of different things. So be aware of that. You may have a bit of everything. You may be two parts ADHD, four parts dyslexic. Um, we even see people with Asperger's, etc. Um, that have a bit of that involved as well. So we're all a bit of a cocktail. No two of us are exactly the same. But we do usually suffer from very similar challenges. So let's dive straight in. The first challenge I want to, I just want to cover off that you may have realized is dyslexic or not, is that you look like you're listening, but it's not sinking in. Have you ever been in a conversation where you've heard somebody talking and it looks like you're completely engaged, but somewhere in your head you've run off to a completely different thing? Maybe it's a seed has been planted in your mind um, and it's got you thinking down a rabbit hole and you've just gotten lost. And what happens is we can sometimes miss critical information when we look like we're listening, the person thinks we've heard, and then we run off and do something completely different. This can be really challenging in relationships and work and a bunch of things because we're not really in control of where our conscious mind is running to. So that's the first trait. The second trait is we must know the purpose to get motivated. One of the things we teach in the Right Side is Tribe is around the, you know, how we build motivation. How can you create motivation on demand? Now, one of the key parts of this is understanding that the purpose of something is the most valuable thing to a right brain thinker, a dyslexic. We truly, truly need to know why we're doing something. I'll give you an example. Imagine your, imagine your son or daughter who's dyslexic has, or your teenage son or daughter, has friends coming around for dinner and you ask them to to go and wash the dishes that are in the sink. Now they may spend 10 to 15 minutes trying to explain why they shouldn't do that and uh, where they could have actually just washed those dishes, for example. Now, because you've only asked them to do something without telling them why, they will automatically put up a fight. They won't have the purpose, so they won't be motivated to take action. If you say, your best friends are coming around and I'm cooking dinner, could you please clean those plates because I want to use them tonight for your friends, that person, is, that person, that child, is much more likely to take action on this. And now this, this goes through life. It doesn't just stop as a kid or a teenager. This keeps going. In work, in relationships, it's so vital to know the purpose. And there's some stuff you can do around that to make it really effective. Number three, another trait of dyslexia is we're on an emotional roller coaster, really, of stress and, of course, emotion. You know, one day we feel like we're on top of the world. Everything's going well. The sun is shining. 
you know, things are happening we didn't even realize that would happen and we feel fantastic. The next day or a day later, we're in bed watching Netflix eating ice cream because, and we have no idea why we've shifted our emotions like, why has it gone so much one-sided than the other side? That's another real common trait. The fourth, we create in our heads but not in reality. So we're great dreamers. You know, one of the big dyslexic benefits is we can create worlds in our minds. You know, we can see things. We can, we can, we can build a product, an innovation, an invention. We can glue three things together to create something new. And we can do this all in our heads. But what really is a challenge is how do you get that into reality? Maybe that's around communicating your dream or your idea using words. Maybe it's to do with um, not being able to reach something uh, and make it perfect enough. You know, many of us are quite perfectionists. We are perfectionists because we see it so clearly in our mind, we don't understand why we can't see it in reality. So that's another very common trait. Does that, does that affect you? Number five is we have flashes of brilliance but struggle with the simple things. I always used to, when I used to have a job and used to work for an insurance company, I was brilliant at some things. I ended up getting an eight hour day of work down to two hours because I automated and tweaked some stuff and, and worked out what levers to push in the business. So I was brilliant at actually making something efficient, changing it, improving it, bringing innovation in. But when it came to doing that last two hours, I hated it. It was repetitive, it was the same thing every day and I really struggled to manage that. So. What you'll find is we may struggle to do the washing if we don't have a routine in place, um, but we may do something absolutely brilliant or amazing on the other hand that other people couldn't even fathom how quickly we've gotten around to it. Does that, does that relate to you? Number six, time and priorities are a huge challenge. You know, we don't see time the same way that left brain symbolic thinkers see it. We, we, you know, you might find yourself being someone who's really late to things or someone who's over early because they know if they weren't, they would be overly late to things. We struggle to prioritize what's important. You know, if your wife or, or husband wants something done, uh, your work needs something done by tomorrow, the kids are, are running around and you also want to take some time for self care and you've got fitness and it just gets so overwhelming. Our brains go down so many rabbit holes. We build up all this anxiety and then nothing usually gets done, you know, um, or, or something completely different from what we theoretically are supposed to be doing. So this is really common as well. And there are some tools you can do to improve this. Number seven, you're actually amazing at focusing. So we see a lot of crossover in adults between dyslexia and ADHD. Remember what I was saying about having multiple parts. Now, dyslexics also have a trouble in focusing, whether you're ADHD or not. We sometimes feel that we can never choose what our minds focus on. It runs away with whatever's interesting at the time. And this is the power of our focus. We are actually amazing at doing it. You know, if you've ever, I, I know for myself, if I'm playing football or soccer, I love it. When I'm in the game, there is nothing that's going to break my focus. I put all my energy in and I do really amazing. When I'm playing a certain video game, the same thing happens. I can be there focused on it for two hours like the world has stopped. And I'm in a real flow state of complete creative and enjoying focus. My challenge, like many people uh, that have dyslexia, is how do I then funnel that into the things that would add value to my life in the long term, not in the short term. And this is a real challenge that we see a lot. So those, are, so those are the seven traits. We're just giving you a taster in this video. We are going to be bringing out a course with a lot more information on this uh, because there are so many people out there who were never taught any of this, especially if you're new um, and you're only just finding out you're dyslexic. So I hope that's given you some tasters. How many of those have you felt relate to you? Maybe not all of them, maybe some of them, potentially all of them. You know, a lot of us feel all of them to some degree.